Thank you for staying with us. The federal government is on course to achieve the a target of converting one million vehicles to compress natural gas by the year 2027. The CNG initiative is one of the objectives of President Bola Tinubu under the Renewed Hope Agenda to ease the burden of Nigerians following the removal of petroleum subsidy by reducing transportation costs by at least 40 percent. Aside the cost of transportation, the use of the compressed natural gas also provides a cleaner and environmentally friendly alternative to traditional fuel. The project director and CEO of the Presidential Compressed Gas Initiative, Michael Oluagmimi, revealed that the federal government also has plans to create 750,000 job opportunities by 2027 through the gas initiative. Well, joining us for this conversation from our Abuja studio is the project director and the CEO of Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, Michael Uluagbemi. Good morning. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Now, more than ever before, as a result of the fuel scarcity, Nigerians have been asking the question, where are the CNG buses? How far have we come with it? Um, we, the, we recall that the president had promised to deliver this to us at some time during the year, but a majority of Nigerians are still asking this question. So, they are watching now and would want you to tell us how far have we come with this project. Thank you once again and good morning to your viewers. Uh, I first want to uh, say that uh, the president feels the pain of all Nigerians. Uh, right from the campaign he had, and to the day of his swearing in and since he's been in government uh, in May 29 of last year. He has continued to communicate to Nigerians that, yes, um, there might be uh, the initial pain of uh, the reforms, which is absolutely necessary so that the nation is not bankrupted. Uh, but he does have a plan uh, for better days ahead. And that is what we represent as the presidential CNG initiative. The idea is simple. Nigeria's addiction for many years uh, to uh, petrol and diesel that continues to rise in price, uh, not by the doing of Nigeria, but by circumstance of geopolitic, geopolitics globally. Uh, that uh, we need to move to a product that is cheaper, that is safer, that is more reliable, and is cleaner. And that is natural gas that Nigeria has in abundance and also sells for far lower price than petrol and diesel. And that is what we've been trying to achieve. Since this program was in panel, our focus has been on ensuring that Nigerians can move our current fleet of over uh, 10 million PMS vehicles over the, over the long term to, at the minimum, be operating on both CNG and PMS. Uh, that is very critical because PMS constitutes not just uh, at all in the nation's pocket, but also continues to cost our citizens so much money that they have very little left to spend after they spent on transportation. And that is strategic, and that's why we have set for ourselves the goal of a million conversions by 27. And we've also said that that million conversions will be provided for free to our commercial vehicles and up to 50% for our rideshare operators so that they can share these upside with the Nigerian people. A car operating on PMS versus one operating on CNG is a differential of almost up to 70% in pricing in terms of operational right. costs between them. And we want to make sure that our commercial vehicles that convey about 90% of our population can be able to operate primarily on compressed natural gas. Now, Since then, the, the, we've uh, set up. All right. Yes. We, because I, I wanted you to uh, go you, straight you ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I wanted yeah, you to me. go straight yeah, to what, um, what, what has been done so far. Nigerians have heard Absolutely. about the intentions of government, but they want to see action. What has been done so far? Yes. Uh, this time last year, Nigeria had less than seven convention centers. We set up uh, a target for ourselves that we had like to have at least 100 of them open before the end of this year. Uh, as of today, we've had well over 123 convention centers up and running in Nigeria, which is significant because that ensures we can then get vehicles into those shops to ensure they are converted and up and running. Since we started the CIP program 
last month. We've been able to run at, uh, over 2,000 nominations through those, via, through those conversion centers, and we continue to work on those vehicles and continue to convert them. Also, we've been able to get rolling at the over 35 new refueling stations, and 75 of them are currently awaiting completion to ensure that once these vehicles are converted, they can have uh, fuel for them across the country. Beyond this also, we've also been able to uh, uh, circulate and we will provide buses that were distributed last week. We handed over buses in Ibadan as well as in Lagos, and this week and next week we'll be looking to hand over here in FCT as well as in Quara State that, will be able to that, will, that is going to form part of the pool of mass transit systems of the states as well as private sector operators to convey uh, folks from home to where their destinations at much cheaper cost than the alternative. These are one of many. We've also been able to train over 750 technicians to date, and we have set ourselves a target of training about 5,000 of them before the end of this year, and 25,000 by year 2027. This is a goal that we're already on, that we're already achieving. Beyond this, we've attracted that investment of over $75 million to the sector, investment in refueling stations, investment in conversion centers, investment in assembly plants, investment in training, all of these things that I've talked about represent significant investment in Nigeria. Just the refueling stations alone, NIPCO uh, is investing in 32 new refueling stations and, five, uh, and three mother stations. NNPCL is investing in about 55 new uh, refueling stations that's already on ground, 40 of them on the way, uh, six of them open in, uh, in Abuja in the last uh, month, actually. Another six is opening in Lagos. Nipco, Nipco already opened nine of their 32. Uh, Bovas is investing in eight, of which two of them already opened in Ibada, and we are hoping to get them going in terms of discharging gas before the end of this month to early middle of next month. Uh, directly by ourselves, the PCNGI is co-investing in about 10 refueling stations. One of them is already ready for uh, uh, first uh, gas uh, by the end of next week, and uh, nine others are already on the way, with three of them ready to, for installation. So you can... Uh, each of these refueling stations is about $250,000 worth of investment, some of them up to a million dollars in the case of LCNG stations that is being, up, uh, being put into play by NNPC retail. So all of these represent significant investment in the economy, which translates to jobs, which also translates to allowing and enabling our citizenry to be able to enable the gas they need to fuel the vehicle at much lower cost, cheaper, uh, safer, more reliable, and of course cleaner for the environment. All right, so in all you have said, but, uh, someone hearing you or people watching might just think these are just lofty ideals. Um, but if you have a one on one conversation with people on a daily basis, there's this concern about the safety and effectiveness of um, the CNG uh, converted vehicle. Now, if that is there, how do you intend on reaching um, over um, about, about one million people to? have their vehicles converted. That's on the one hand. On the second hand, you mentioned that uh, for public vehicles conveying Nigerians on a daily basis, um, it will be free for them. But we know that all of these, so a lot of these public vehicles do not, uh, the owners not even maintain the vehicles, talk less of maintaining um, the CNG uh, kits and everything. How do, how do you think they will be effective in pushing the agenda of the government in, conver in converting from uh, fuel-powered vehicles to CNG-powered? Yeah, let me, I, I would think that uh, having been on this for well over nine months uh, um, and continuing to explain to our people, I found out that most people um, are already willing to convert. In fact, I will tell you that for the private conversions going on, say, in Nipco or Bovas, there's up to nine to 12 months waiting line today for people to convert the vehicle. It's not so much for the willingness to want to convert, it's actually about the ability to, the, the bottleneck that uh, the number of available bays and technicians represent for them to actually get their car converted. Almost everybody I've seen, nobody, uh, the concern about safety, even though uh, it's perceived, because at the end of the day, CNG is much more safer than petrol or diesel. Almost there's a nine, nine out of 10 chance that your petrol vehicle, once it gets into an accident, will explode. Uh, CNG is eight times less explosive than diesel, 18 times less explosive than uh, petrol. It is uh, in a non extruded uh, uh, bulletproof container uh, where, uh, uh, cylinder, which ensures that it's super safe. And even if it leaks, it disappears very quickly into the air because it's much lighter than air. And with uh, uh, a self ignition temperature of 1001 degrees centigrade, CNG is super safe. 
So I, I have no doubt in my mind that the one million uh, uh, level that we are trying to achieve with commercial operators will be achieved, Not, especially because we are partnered with most of the unions operating in the sector. Uh, we have not had any issue whatsoever in convincing people to sign up for this initiative. Conversion in, uh, the conversion incentive program is easily the most popular program of this government. Um, in every state we've been, been to, NURTW, Retia, NATO, we are moving next to Edo and Delta states. They've been pounding our door, wanting to ensure that they get in and make sure that we come to their state and ensure that commercial vehicles are also be able to benefit from, from this program. After we leave Edo and Delta, we'll be moving on, uh, of course, to Ekiti and, and, and Kwara, and then we'll be moving on to uh, Uyo, uh, that's Akwaibom, and uh, River States. They are demanding. Every state, I've had meetings severally with state commissioners of transport, state commissioners of commerce, industries, and trade, state commissioners of energy. They are all asking for PCNGI to bring this CIP initiative to their state. So there's really no concern, to be honest with you, when it comes to uh, safety by the population, because they recognize that, look, um, petrol and diesel already are very, very dangerous way to convey petroleum. You, if you go get into a petrol accident, you and I know it bursts into flames. The petrol is not stored in a bulletproof container, unlike CNG. Petrol is not lighter than air. It rather it flows down and it ensures that the fuel can, con can consume the vehicle. So that, there's, no, there's no concern at all. Now to the second question um, about uh, 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 what about the maintenance of the vehicles. We've, we, are, we are coming up with a very strict safety protocol. In fact, this week, we had our first demo of what we call the Nigerian Gas Vehicle Monitoring System. NGVMS represents a one-stop shop to, to monitor and to regulate gas vehicles in Nigeria. We brought on board Standard Organization of Nigeria, Nigerian Automotive Development and Design Council, Federal Road Safety Commission, and the Nigerian Midstream Downstream uh, uh, Petroleum Regulatory Agency. The idea is very simple. Every car that is going on, uh, that is on natural gas, whether uh, on, on gas, whether it is natural gas, even vehicles that are on ILPG or LNG, has an obligation to register within the system. And whenever they are on the road, uh, first and foremost, they, have, they can be inspected by FRC officials. And whenever they are going to be regassed at any refueling station that is regulated by NMPDRE, they will, their inspection and the up-to-dateness of their inspection will be checked by the attendant before they are refueled. If your vehicle is out of date, it is out of inspection, and it has not been maintained properly, the reseller will, the refueling attendant will have the right to reject refueling your vehicle because no, you're not in compliance with NGVMS. We're already testing the system. It was demoed on Sunday and Monday, actually, at Nipco Station here in Abuja. I, was, uh, I, I had my team that was present to ensure the smoothness of that, of that pilot. We hope to be able to get that pilot across Nigeria in the next 60 days. Uh, in addition to this, there will be a printed decal that will identify every CNG vehicle in Nigeria to make sure that folks, when they get to the attendant, both the database of the directory and the fiscal label, we identify them properly as properly converted CNG vehicles. So the, okay. both the conversion, uh, the refueling, and the maintenance will be monitored by the Nigerian Gas Vehicle Monitoring System. If you recall that we launched back in June when we had the stakeholder workshop with all the critical regulators I just mentioned. Mm. Okay, so they're also concerned about the cost of conversion. You mentioned earlier that for private vehicles going into this initiative, there will be a 50% reduction in the fee. Looking at um, the fact that um, many of these kits are imported and with the high dollar, with the dollar rate at this point, what's the cost of conversion of a saloon car as well as an SUV? I'm asking because a lot of Nigerians watching might be interested at this point. So what's the cost? Yeah, so let me be very clear. The conversion incentive program that we have is to enable uh, commercial vehicles. If they are pure commercial vehicles, that means they run either as unionized associations or they are registered as commercial vehicles to run. You typically see them in a, with a red plate. Or they are registered under some kind of, of the three major unions I just mentioned or any of the other ones like the Painted Taxi Association of Nigeria. Uh, we'll be able to obtain their conversion kits for free. And if installation is going to be for free, they are nominated by the association so they can sign up on our website. And then we direct them to for inspection first because not every vehicle will be convertible because uh, some vehicles mm -hmm. are just out of date in terms of maintenance and they cannot be converted. However, once they are qualified or pre-qualified to be converted, they can get their conversion for free. Those people who enjoy the 50% discount are those people on the right share. That is, you use your vehicle for both private purpose. You're on both Uber, uh, Lag Ride as the case may be. 
Uh, but you also use your vehicle uh, as a, for private purposes as well as uh, mass transit. So you're a ride share vehicle. Uh, you will be able to obtain this 50% uh, discount. Uh, this 50% discount is because you are not fully using your vehicle for commercial purpose, so uh, you still use it for private purpose. On the other hand, you are bankable because you are, we can see the funding uh, that you get from your ride share, and so we can ensure that the 50% discount is fulfilled and the balance is paid back uh, into the government post so they can acquire more kits to cover more people. So that is the program. That's the conversion incentive program. Now, if you're talking about private, there are a lot of private conversion centers already up and running. Bovas is running well over 20 of them. NIPCO is running well over 30 or 45 of them. Uh, across the country, even Portland Gas is also running a few here in Abuja as well as in Lagos. So you can get your car converted if you want to. And some of these private organizations are already offering uh, significant financing opportunity for folks that want to get their car converted. The pricing varies. To be honest, I can't sit here and tell you uh, this is the price of conversion. Like you said, FX is one thing, but even more importantly is the variety of cars. Uh, the variety of cars ensures that a car that is maybe a four-cylinder small vehicle might go for as low as 400, 500,000 in conversion, but if an SUV may go for as high as 1.5 million, whether it's four-cylinder, six-cylinder, or eight-cylinder vehicle. Uh, so there's a wide variety of kits. Some kits are also sequential, some are non-sequential for carburetor vehicles, so the pricing also differs. Uh, but <coughs> yes, it represents significant cost uh, to the consumer, upfront cost. However, for what we have seen, even the most expensive, as almost 1.5 million, it takes about uh, eight to uh, six to eight months for that, mo uh, for that to be regained in terms of savings from petrol. A vehicle today that is refueled with about 50 to 60,000 Naira, this is an average Toyota Corolla, a week, uh, we use about four to 5,000 Naira worth of CNG. That means every week that person is saving about 50,000 Naira. And if that vehicle was converted for 750,000 Naira, it would mean that that money will be recouped in as low as 15 weeks. And 15 weeks, as you know, is four months. So it means in four months, you have recouped your money that you used to actually do this uh, CNG conversion. And after that, it's profits to you and the savings to you. I think this is a very good uh, financial profile for vehicle All conversion. Right. And we are beginning to see interest from our banks. And we are already in discussions with the credit call, the other program of Mr. President, to see how we All can right. provide credit, especially to civil servants as well as paid workers, to ensure that they can be able to access the credit to do their conversion upfront. Okay, so, so far, how many jobs have been created? Because uh, part of it, uh, this initiative, is that jobs will be created in the process. If you could just give us perhaps a figure. And then uh, also talk to us about uh, the launch that happened, uh, I think, some days ago. There are reports about that of uh, the CNG at 230 naira per liter to ease the fuel costs for Nigerians. Talk to us about that as well. Yeah, so in terms of jobs created, easily uh, more than 5,000 direct jobs have been created just in the last seven months. We are talking about direct investment in conversion centers, about 120 of them so far, about 75 refueling stations. We are talking about mother stations that have come on stream. We are talking about the, uh, trans uh, on the platform assembly side, we've activated about four assembly sites across Nigeria and manufacturing CNG vehicles and tricycles as well. We're talking about the transportation sector where we're distributing buses and bus drivers and bus operators. If you look at the Oniru Transport Company last week, additional 20 buses mean at the minimum 45 people newly employed in that organization. In the case of uh, Paysetter Transport Service in, in Ibadan, also they mentioned that at least 80 new persons are going to be onboarded because of the additional buses they received. And this is continuing as we roll this across the country. For every conversion center, you need at least between 5 to 15 technicians. And for every uh, refueling station, we need a minimum of 5 to, 10 uh, 5 to 10 refueling attendants in order to support it. So you are looking at the quantum of job creation that we've just achieved by just $75 million of additional investment in the sector in the last seven to eight months. Uh, I can imagine as we begin to roll out and expand our footprint, uh, the, our target of 250,000 direct jobs and about 750,000 uh, uh, 500,000 additional, making total 750,000 jobs is achievable. With 5,000 direct jobs in the last eight months, and easily, if you're talking at the ratio of 1 to 10, you're looking at additional 50,000 indirect jobs generated because of this work and activity we've had in the last eight months. That is something that is significant and continues to, uh, I would believe, we continue to grow as we continue to expand our investment. Yes, I asked the, the second question about the 230 naira per liter 
uh, CNG that was launched some days ago, I think, uh, that you should give us yes. more insight about that and how accessible is it for Nigerians? Yes, so these uh, the 230 Naira uh, per SCM for motor vehicles uh, initiative was launched with uh, NIPCO PLC. Uh, NIPCO has been a, a great partner of the program, and they are making this available in all their CNG stations. And they already have well over uh, uh, 14 of them in operation across the country. They just opened uh, uh, new stations in Lagos, about nine of them, in addition to the one they have in Edo State and here in Abuja. Two new stations in Abuja to the one that already exists. And they are providing this uh, at uh, 230 Naira per SCM for motor vehicles, and I think about 300 Naira for 290 or 300 Naira for uh, trucks. Uh, I, for us, that represents significant partnership to ensure discounts are passed on to Nigerian people. If you recall, back in April, the president approved through the NMDPRA concessionary pricing for compressed natural gas. And we are making sure that all of our partners are passing this on to the public. Of course, it's a market-based system, so for some partners it might be higher, but NIPCO have committed to the 230 Naira level, and they are rolling it out across their stations. And we're also rolling out 10,000 kits through them that will be made available to the public through the conversion incentive program. This is also significant. So you're not just, you're not just going to get your vehicle foiled, you're going to get it converted for free. If you're using it commercially, as I've already explained. All right, so um, in all of this now, um, there's this talk that um, when you convert to CNG, you have to, have, um, you have to change your engine. Um, I, I would like you to react no. to this. Quickly, Dev. No, you don't, have, you don't have to change your engine. Your engine already uses gas. Um, when you're using petrol, your engine does not use petrol. <clears throat> your engine actually uses gas. That's why you have your fuel injectors. Okay. okay. What you're right. actually doing is bypassing the process of, a, of a transforming liquid petroleum to gas and uh, using compressed natural gas directly to your engine when you're using CNG, which ensures that there's not another additional process of transformation that creates the suits and emission that you talk about. That's why CNG is much cleaner, safer, and more reliable. All right, we'll leave the conversation right. here now. Michael Luagbemi, uh, CEO, Project Thank Director, you. Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative. Thank you for your time on the program. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks to your viewer. And stay safe.